Honor, and so it is my honor to present to you a great man, a man of the people, a candidate for the presidency of these United States, a man who, in the estimation How do I, of uh, look? all of us, you need a book. shave. And those listen, this speech on national television, I remember, keep smiling at me. That's what I'm so tired. And uh, hang on every word. Yes, I know, but I've heard your speech so often, it puts me to sleep. The campaign is almost over. Don't goof now. Oh, uh, what's the line I'm supposed to laugh at? You laugh when I say, I don't care how much barbecue sauce they put on it, it's still baloney. And so... Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the next president of the United States. <clears throat> Governor Bradford, Lieutenant Governor Hanson, Chairman Whitfield, ladies and gentlemen, and all of you dear friends gathered here today in magnificent Moose Hall. <laughs> May I tell you what a real pleasure, and I really mean this, what a real pleasure it is to return here and once again have the opportunity of partaking of your wonderful drinking water. <laughs> During this campaign, we have covered many miles and shaken many a hand, and I, I might say wherever we go, we are impressed by the smiling, friendly faces but nowhere have we found the warmth, the sincere interest, and the hospitality that you people have displayed to us here today. <laughs> and as always, when we come here, my wife and I cannot help but be impressed by the good fortune you have to live in this wonderful state. <laughs> With its farms and its cities, its lakes and its rivers, its highways and byways, its hills and dales, its parks and playgrounds, its factories and its museums, its industry and its culture. <laughs> and may I say <laughs> to you, all of you, one of the great thrills of this campaign, a moment I shall always treasure, was the ride across the river a few hours ago in your fine mayor's fine car with my beautiful, devoted wife. <laughs> <laughs> what a sight. <laughs> To the right, the manicured lawns of Mansion Hill. And there, stretching out to the left, those miles and miles of quaint adobe huts. Yes, friends, these are the sights that renew one's faith. And as you go about this great land, oh, yes, you see, Robin, there are many good things, too. And I might add, I might add that the positive outweighs the negative. You've been in as many countries as I have. And I have traveled the length and the bed of this globe. Sometimes, um, <laughs> sometimes, my assignment for my chief, other times just as a private citizen, interested, concerned, open-minded, but proud to be an emissary of our free enterprise system. And if you've looked at their systems and listened to their complaints and their problems, seen the lack of the problems and necessities of life, you would realize that too often we can't see the forest for the trees. <laughs> We lose, we lose sight of our good fortune to live in a land where the poor can be rich. Yes, and the rich can be poor. Now, this is not meant in any criticism of any one or any group, because it is human nature not to count our blessings. Only the other day I said to my wife, who, by the way, has been a real soldier in this effort, I said to her, honey, rigorous though this campaign may be, what an opportunity to meet your fellow citizens. To draw, to draw strength from them, to mature and grow as a human being. <laughs> now, now, as to our country's direction, why, why, why we are stalled on dead center? Now, it is admittedly one thing to criticize when our opposition says, you've never had it so good. My friends, I don't care how much barbecue sauce they put on it. It's still baloney. <laughs> and I, so I say to you, we can make changes. We can clean up your cities. 